Um, thank you uh, very much, uh, first of all, for, for inviting me here. It's, it's really an honor to be here. Um, and I also want to congratulate Moti Ragel for the, for the new book on, on cultural sociology. It looks very interesting, <laughs> <laughs> particularly the pictures. Uh, so, yes, um, I, I'm going to talk about cultural sociology as cultural studies and um, uh, deal with the case of world polity theory in this talk. Um, so, um, cultural sociology or sociology of culture is the fastest growing field in, in sociological associations throughout the world. Um, yet it is uh, a bit difficult to define what cultural sociology is. In cultural sociology one often studies popular phenomena like uh, television, the media, popular culture, fashion, sport and consumption. Typically the focus is on ordinary people's life in the sense that those phenomena are, are approached from such a perspective. Related to that, typically uh, the, uh, the topics are studied by using qualitative methods and case studies are quite common. In that sense, cultural sociology represents an escape from the boredom of tedious uh, statistical methods uh, to qualitative research and to more essayistic writing, at least compared with the reporting style of uh, positivist behavioral sciences. That does not mean that there wouldn't be, be any cultural sociology using statistical methods, but the approach differs substantially from, from positivist uh, approaches. Uh, if we take the example of Pierre Bourdieu, uh, who is um, an influential figure in, in cultural sociology, his study, Distinction, uh, was based on, on survey data. Uh, but in this book, Bourdieu is not interested merely in to examine uh, the, the statistical significantness, uh, but rather the, the sociological sig significance of statistical relationships. Uh, he looks at uh, uh, st the statistical associations between characteristics of different practices and tastes uh, as indicators uh, of the existence of of, of different habituses or ways of life, uh, 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 i.e. certain ways of thinking and, and, and certain patterns of behavior that people have. So the search for causal relationships uh, as explanations uh, of people's action is thrown overboard. Um, the more recent research of omnivorousness uh, uh, in, in people's taste uh, preferences is another example of, of statistical uh, uh, methods being used. Uh, the rise of cultural sociology is also part of what is known as uh, the linguistic turn. Um, the, the concept is typically attributed uh, to the French anthropologist Claude Lévi-Straw um, uh, whose Anthropologie Structurale uh, was published uh, in French already in 1958 and uh, in the 1960s in English. Although structuralism and post-structuralism uh, have uh, s uh, experienced uh, several turns since then, the linguistic turn meant that uh, so social and, and cultural phenomena began to be approached from the perspective of of structures of meaning and, uh, and meaning, meaning construction. At the moment, uh, it seems that the structuralist thinking evident in levi straw is pretty much forgotten or out of fashion and has been replaced with uh, social constructionism, but the emphasis is basically the same. Instead of thinking of social phenomena in terms of mechanical causal processes, 
governed by some universal laws, uh, one conceives of them uh, as meaningful action. As a term, I think cultural sociology represents the return of the empire of sociology, so to speak. That is, uh, particularly from the 1980s onward, cultural studies as a cross-disciplinary field has become very popular and, and, and scholarship in that area has grown tremendously. Um, as a person in academic publishing said uh, sometime in the 1990s, anything that has culture in the title sells like hotcakes. In that sense, coining the term cultural sociology is a counteraction of sociology to gain back what has been lost uh, to the growth of cultural studies. As a sociologist uh, and editor of, uh, of a cultural studies journal, I have an ambiguous relationship to cultural sociology. On the one hand, uh, I tend to think of it uh, as an unnecessary concept. I would prefer thinking of cultural studies both as a cross-disciplinary field and as a subfield of sociology. On the other hand, the growth of cultural sociology is a welcome development in the sense that it gathers the kind of cultural studies scholars I, li I like to hang around with. Let me elaborate on this point. As has been emphasized, uh, within cultural studies, uh, cultural studies is not a discipline, but uh, rather a cross-disciplinary field. It is a field in, in which one takes culture seriously and grants it some uh, it certain independence, but at the same time, it is stressed that the symbolism and practices of ev everyday life can only be analyzed within the context of power and politics. From the very outlet, outset, uh, the British roots of cultural studies represented at least uh, literary studies, history and sociology, but many other disciplines within the social sciences and humanities soon, soon began to identify with cultural studies. The Birmingham School was just, uh, just as comfortable in borrowing and picking up influences from Levi Strauss uh, structuralism and symbolic interactionism as from the Marxist theory, theorists Althusser and Gramsci. However, in recent years it seems many disciplines in the humanities have redefined themselves as representatives of cultural studies scholarship. But the original interest in the sociology uh, in the society at large or in the attempts to understand those phenomena by doing empirical research have been forgotten. Instead, people educated in, uh, say, um, English language or literary uh, literature departments do more or less the same kind of research that they used to be, used to do, but now under the banner of cultural studies. Uh, in that sense, if and when cultural sociology is the term that refers uh, to sociologists interested in cultural studies scholarship, it is good because in, then in those circles there are not that much scholars who only study works of art uh, uh, or popular culture as reflections of modernity or, or they or reflections of their admiration for, for, the art, for the artists without relate, relating those products to society in any way. Furthermore, among sociologists there is normally a better understanding of methodology or of the whole idea that a study should have a, an object, a research design and a method. There are, there are however, however more ambiguous, uh, uh, sorry, ambitious attempts to carve out a special niche for, for cultural sociology. For instance, in the programmatic editorial to the first issue of the new journal Cultural Sociology, David Inglis, uh, Andrew Blakey and Robin Wa Wagner Pacifici 
suggest that the term uh, social differentiates cultural sociology from cultural studies. Uh, I quote, simply put, the presence of the signifier social is much less pronounced in, in cultural studies than, than it is uh, in social, sociology. Conceptual positions that take the social as an object of interest and investigation can be said to belong to the broad set of sociological paradigms. End of quote. There may be some truth to such a claim, but on the other hand, uh, for instance, Bruno Latour has suggested that the epithet social is quite useless and harmful and that we should get rid of it within sociology. Uh, be as it may, I think it is quite clear that there, there is no real difference between cultural studies and cultural sociology. For one thing, both of these terms are social constructions. They are labels used to refer to a set of uh, studies and uh, scholars as if they were a single uniform entity. But more importantly, the scope of studies uh, and approaches defined, uh, defined um, are practically identical within cultural, cultural studies and cultural sociology. But as said, within cultural sociology, one does not easily meet the kind of cultural studies scholars who come from the humanities. In that sense, cultural sociology is an area in the cross-disciplinary uh, field of, of cultural studies. Uh, but whether we talk about cultural sociology or cultural studies, during recent years I have begun to question what the limits of that area of, of scholarship are. That is of course partly because as co-editor of, of, of a major cultural studies journal, I often uh, have to make up my mind whether a submission sent to us fits within the, the aims and scope of our journal. Uh, but there's also a personal motive for, for this questioning. At times I think, I have felt that part of my own work would not be suitable for our own journal. Uh, in other words, that it falls beyond cultural studies. This is serious in the sense that edit, editing a journal is a lot of unpaid work. So one really has to be motivated to do it. So if, you, if I feel that I'm an outsider, it's obvious that I begin to question, am I any more the right person to be an editor of, of a cultural studies journal? Um, so in the rest of this talk, I will discuss this issue. I will explain in what sense I have had doubts about belonging to cultural studies or cultural sociology for that matter, matter when doing research that deals with global governance, uh, particularly with the domestication of transnational mod models in, in local settings. At the, at the end of my talk I will then say why I have eventually come to the conclusion that I belong, that what I do is cultural sociology as, as cultural studies. I will start by discussing the ambiguous role that culture and art have in cultural studies, uh, and at least as much in, in cultural sociology. It even seems that there is an underlying hypocrite double talk about culture and art in this area of scholarship. Uh, this ambu ambiguous relationship can be seen quite clearly in the, in the history through which cultural sociology has emerged as a, as a field of sociology. For instance, um, in sociological associations, this field of research was originally referred to as sociology of art, which then gradually evolved into sociology of culture, and still later uh, it's been you referred to as cultural sociology. Similar 
ambiguities can be found within cultural studies, although it was never understood as art studies. The reason for these ambiguities is in the underlying notions of culture. On the one hand, uh, in cultural studies, culture has been understood in uh, the anthropological sense. Uh, it refers to ways of life or to structures of feeling, uh, as Raymond Williams put it. Hence, cultural studies scholarship has researched everyday life and how people in different, often class-based subcultures make sense of their lived experience. To take an example, Paul Willis uh, studied working class biker boys uh, as, as a subculture in which riding the bike, up, sitting upright on the bike, was a way to express and develop a particular attitude toward controlling the nature and the machinery. On the other hand, the hierarchic notion of culture often lurks in the background. According to this hierarchic notion of culture, culture depicts objects that a people or civilization have created, objects that are assessed from the viewpoint of their aesthetic value. In its classical form, uh, within this notion of culture, the real high culture consists of those products that provide intellectual stimulus to the people, whereas low culture consists of products that offer no intellectual or educational inspiration, or hardly any. Typically, cultural studies scholars have take distance from a, a snub attitude toward high culture and instead favor studies that have to do with the, the contents or consumption of mass or popular culture. Even if uh, scholars are interested in people's habitus or way of life, there is the implicit idea that uh, their relationship to aesthetic objects like music, movies, TV shows or the like are particularly important in reflecting or, or perhaps developing or dumbing down their, their view of life or attitude toward their life and living conditions. There is the, the Frankfurt School critique of mass culture still present in the field, but in most cases, cultural studies represents a defense of low culture and bad taste. Uh, whatever the attitude is toward high or low culture, in this way, a great majority of cultural studies scholarship deals with aesthetic culture. There are certainly good reasons for privileging aesthetic culture and the media in this way. Uh, since scholars in this area are interested in power and politics and in the government of the population in contemporary societies with subtle means, uh, the media and mass culture are crucial in many ways. Yet this obses obsession with aesthetic culture and the mass media is problematic. After all, not all government at a, at a distance is done through aesthetic culture. In any case, uh, in, in effect, cultural studies and cultural so sociology is often equated with studies that have to do with culture in the, in the hierarchic sense, or in the sense that culture consists of particular cultural objects. The idea that culture in the anthropological sense consists, consists of maps of meaning or particular we views of life and uh, uh, outlook on, on the human reality is ignored or left without due attention. That is also the reason why I have sometimes felt that uh, part of my, my own research falls beyond cultural studies. I said, uh, in recent years I have uh, been interested in global governance and in the way in which global ideas and trends are domesticated in local sites, such as nation states. With, the area of interest, with that area of interest, I have sometimes found myself in a strange company or new company. 
For instance, a lot of relevant research is done in political science, particularly international politics and in international uh, organizational research. Therefore, it is no wonder that I have come to question my, myself, am I any longer part of cultural studies? <coughs> to get a gist of, of this area of research and to let you assess whether it belongs to cultural studies or cultural sociology, let me briefly explain the research questions of my research team and describe a case study example. From the 1990s onward, globalization, famously defined by Roland Robertson as the, the compression of the world and the intensification of the consciousness of the world as a whole, has been a hot topic both in the public and in in the public and in the social sciences. As one of the signs of the interconnectedness uh, of, the, of the globe, scholars have paid attention to fashions that spread throughout the world, not only in, in design, but in politics and management at various levels, from private and public organizations to nation states. Simultaneously, though, many social scientists have paid attention to how persistent the local consciousness is, how people tend to retain a banal nationalist or banal localist understanding, according to which nations are unique cultural entities decision and, and that decisions are about changes are made locally and that each nation state or local government follows its own developmental path. This raises the question how these two states of affairs, cosmopolitan consciousness related to uniformity in social uh, changes on one hand and persis persistent banal nationalism on the other coexist. How is it that we are quite conscious of the globally networked reality in which we live share a lot of experiences with people from other nation states and yet conceive of territorial states or their subunits such as municipalities as essentially separate entities. In current research, these two phenomena have been conceived of as discrete processes. Globalization has been ascribed particularly to economic processes whereas those studying 